Welcome to this episode of Spiritual and Paranormal Experiences, episode 43, Ancient Egyptian Civilization. We have no special announcements. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Happy, happy birthday, Chris, Chris and Crystal! Crystal! Happy, happy birthday! March 5th and... Oh. I have no idea. You got no. me. No! My brain is flopped. Happy birthday, Chris and Crystal Bazaar. And I would like to thank all of my new fans from the town of Watertown who discovered the show on Channel 5. And now it has swept through the whole town. I am a super star. Yeah, but they're all calling yes. me. Lisa. Je oh, wait, wait. No, Jenny found it first. Jenny. Lisa. Nancy, they're all doing it. And now we got them, they're calling us, so thank you very much for supporting the show. And you are giving out the home phone number. Oh, her uh, personal. Uh, I, I'm sorry. The number to call only is... Only those that are privileged. 860-886-4793. If I could have remembered you hear that, it, I might have given it. You hear that, Ray? <laughs> At the time. <laughs> so... Special announcements, happy birthday, Chris and Crystal. Privileged inside information. We Remember that have one? no calendars. We got a ton of stuff to go through. So we're not talking about anything, astrology, nothing about moons this week. Tune in next week. Promise you, you'll have some new moon information. You're, you're a moon, all right. <laughs> new moon. And we're not having a spiritual moment. But I did, was asked, why did they cut us off at the end on the spiritual moment? Spiritual moments in Paranormal Chronicles now have been moved to the end of the show. But I can tell you, if you go to www.cbezio.com, you'll be able to find all of the content in which we discussed. Okay, so at the end of the show, we will be having a Paranormal Chronicle. Will you stop trying to groom yourself? We're doing a show. Well, I don't want to look as if I was plugged in. Why don't you play with your hair, Dad? What hair does he have? There you go. That's longer. Paranormal Chronicles at the end of the show, if we stop goofing around and getting serious, we'll be talking about paranormal phenomenon, the night of unseen entities. But we will talk right to the very end of the what show. What was that? You don't got it in front of you. This the is night of up. unseen entities? Yes. Uh, UFO encounters resulted in poltergeist, telepathy, and other strange phenomenon. We'll be talking about that at the end of the show if we get to it. If not, you can always go to the website and read all of the content. So let's get right into our weekly topic, Ancient Egyptian Civilization. Hit it, girl! There are days when the sand blows ceaselessly, blanketing the remains of a powerful dynasty that ruled Egypt 5,000 years ago. When the wind dies down and the sands are still, a long shadow casts a wedge of darkness across the Sahara, creeping over ever longer as the North African sun sinks beyond the horizon. This is where our history of Egypt begins in the shadow of the great pyramids of Giza, where stone meets sky as a testament to one of the greatest civilizations on earth. Here on the plateau of Giza, 2,300,000 blocks. blocks of stone, some weighing as much as nine tons, were used to build an eternal tomb for a divine king. Those of you who would like to know where we've gotten this information from could always go to www.pbs.org and look under Nova, Nova for Ancient Egypt. 5,000 years ago, the fourth <coughs> dynasty of Egyptians' old kingdom was a highly advanced civilization where the kings, known as pharaohs, were believed to be gods. They lived amidst palaces and temples built to honor them and their deified ancestors. Deified. Sorry. Deified ancestors. Pharaoh originally meant great house, but later came to mean king, 
what we know of this early society changes and is reinterpreted year by year as new archaeologists archaeological finds. finds discovered beneath the desert sands revise our understanding of ancient Egypt. This website, and this information came from PBS, will show you science in the action, bringing you face to face with the evidence archaeologists use to understand the meaning of Giza's pyramids and to the process of evaluating the finds they will uncover beneath the sands of the plateau. Don't speculate what you think's underneath the sands, honey. Before looking Just closely, stay to the script. Yes. Stop. Before looking closely at pharaonic society and the beginning of the Pyramid Age, one first step into Egypt's landscape and take a look around. Ancient Egyptians called their land Kemet, which mean, meant black. You sure that's not purple? <coughs> oh, no, that's Kemet. Kemet. Sorry. After the black, fertile, silt layered soil that was left behind each year during the annual inundation when the Nile flooded the fields, the most prevalent color of the desert, however, is a decidedly reddish yellow okra. The Egyptians called the desert oh. deshret, meaning red. And this endless carpet of sand covers an estimated 95% of Egypt, interrupted only by the narrow band of green carved by the waters of the Nile. Here, the extreme dry sands of the desert meet the fertile, silt-laden soils along the Nile, a river that provides a source of life for the entire nation and a good part of the African continent. Our history of Egypt begins around <coughs> the year 3000 BC with the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt into one united kingdom. Under this new ruling dynasty, the first king was Menes. Menes? Menes. The third dynasty. The 30. The 30 dynasty 